have here at the Agentic Feminine. We're live on Instagram this Saturday. It's October 21st, 2023. How's everyone doing? I have a sick kiddo, and that's too bad, but it saves me from going to the fall festival at the school, which is happening right now. I'm not there. It's like my first time in a million trillion years that I didn't have to go to the festival and stand there sweating my ass off while watching my kid climb some plastic rock wall. So, or the other thing that's worse is watching them go through the blow up obstacle course and just hoping they come out unbroken. You know, but something always happens. Like one of them always comes up and someone landed on their hair. They had a whole bunch of butts in their face. I don't know, but I don't have to deal with it. My 11 year old went, I'm like, here's some money. Take the cake that we're donating for the cakewalk and have some fun and have a good time and sent him out the door. So that's really fun. So that's a good part of having a sick kid. But anyway, here's hoping she's good enough to go to school on Monday. You know what I mean? So I couldn't come on yesterday because I had to do clothes shopping, which I really fucking hate. The clothes shopping for parents in the spring and the fall and you've got to clean up the dressers and you got to get rid of the stuff that they've grown out of like I had my like my daughter had to put on a long sleeve shirt this week and it like came up like halfway between her wrist and her elbow and I was like so I ran out and got some clothes just so that she doesn't look like a complete you know uh you know poor kid from the 1800s in London you know, Tiny Tim or whatever with the high waters and all those, you know, but see my kids grow up, they don't grow out. So they, so they have to wear these pants that are too short for them that fit their waist. So I don't know. It's all, it's like, that has always been the bane of my existence. It's like, because especially when you clean up the drawers and you clean out the dressers to get rid of the old clothes that don't fit them anymore, it's sad. I'm happy that they're growing and I love my kids as they get older and they're, and I can, we can watch the same shows and they've got good senses of humor, but it is sad getting rid of the small clothes. It just is. I don't care. Anyway, so that, so I really will be happy when, when they stop growing and they're in charge of their own clothes buying. I don't have to deal with it anymore and I don't have to clean out their dressers and nothing. I'm excited for that. But anyway, it's good. Um, I don't know if the ex is going to challenge the divorce ruling. I really don't because he filed this his lawyer filed this motion to for i don't know if it's called like ex clearance and something or other and i guess you have to file it if you do plan to appeal and you have 30 days to appeal i think that's my understanding of what's happening i don't know but i think that's what's going on so he's filed it in case he decides to appeal now if he decides to appeal where i won i'm going to appeal where i lost so tit for tat motherfucker and the one thing i have to say is that the judge really tried you can see that she that she tried really hard to split assets down the middle and to you that might or to someone to a random person that might be a good way to to split divorce assets and it's not like they can sit there and really like dive into everyone's lives and see what's going on but I just want to reiterate, and I know I've said this before, and so maybe I'm like beating a dead horse and, and, you know, going on and on about something, but the justice system does not take into consideration how much more time moms spend on the children. And time is an asset. And the thing is, women's, men's time is an asset, but women's time in our society is not treated as an asset. It's not treated as something valuable, which is why our unpaid labor and our unpaid caretaking like can make society happen. Society only functions because women's time is not valued, and so all the labor, a lot, so so much more labor is put on us. And you know, the ex said something snarky in a text about you know a, a retirement account or whatever, and I didn't respond because I don't think it's productive. But he is stealing my time. He has a, like abandoned us, and it's not just me with the kids. Like he's abandoned me with this house that needs a lot of work. He's abandoned me with the elderly cats. He's abandoned me on so many different levels because, and sure, he might be paying child support and he might be paying some of the bills, although he's not now because of the ruling, but he's not helping out. It's my time. This is my time. It's my time. And time is money and time is an asset. And we need to start valuing our time, my people, my women's, my mothers. Our time is an asset. I vote so that the schools have the resources they need to hire people, to pay people the work that they need done. I mean, I there's a, a wonderful fall festival going on and that was likely completely done by two women who 
get, who basically probably put in the same amount of work they would if they were rocking and rolling in a professional job to host this ball festival, which is going to raise money for the school. And it's all on their backs and it's all unpaid labor. And I think it's unethical and immoral. And I just want to say that. So anyway, so that's what the, that's what the judge, you know, start taking into account mom's time. And I tried to explain that to my lawyer, but she didn't, I mean, clearly like that's not the culture of justice systems and family law courts. So who am I and what do I know? So she didn't argue. I mean, she kind of, I guess she tried to argue it as best as she could knowing the lay of the land. And I'm coming in, not knowing anything about this situation and saying, this is a problem here, my people. Anyway, women start valuing your time, start really, you know, understanding your worth in that sense. Okay, now we're going to get to what I want to talk about because I t did say in the last live that I want to move to California from Dallas, Texas. I want to move to Sacramento. We're, that's the plan. I've been working toward it and I'm really fucking excited. I just really hope people that the Trader Joe's and the Targets in California do not play bro country because the stores here have started to play bro country. Now, I like country as much as anyone. I love Willie. I love Dwight. I love a lot of especially old school country. I like good country. I like Chris Stapleton. I mean, I like some country. Bro country where we're like trying to hump our old trucks and we are like masturbating in a lake and or we're like unhappy in our, or or the unhappy in the marriage country like which I don't think they play at Trader Joe's but they were playing it at this like computer fixer store and I had to like leave. Anyway, it's hella painful. Like I'm super sensitive about the music I listen to for some reason and I love all kinds of music. I love all kind I mean I'm a very big music appreciator and I love going to concerts and everything like but I feel music on a visceral level and I cannot step foot in an academy anymore. An academy sports and outdoors here in Texas because the bro country is so assaulting. It is like being tortured. And I don't know if I'm the demographic that they want. I can I consider myself kind of sporty. You know, like I'm kind of athletic. I mean, I do work out and I do exercise and I do like to have um, be fit and be ready to go. And I want my kids to be ready to go. And I've been to academy a million thousand times growing up. But like the bro country, I can't even, I can't even go in it. So I know this is a super tangent, but I just really hope 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 that the stores in california are not playing bro country like let's have some gangster rap or something but i have to go with my airpods and listen to my own music while i'm while i'm shopping because i can't even stand it but let's talk about something let's talk about where we choose to live and i know that we're choosing to live based on our professional the professional availability of wherever we choose to live but we but we need to talk about something in the u.s being beauty geographical natural beauty versus convenience now Yes, the U.S. is the absolute hegemonic power when it comes to convenience and valuing convenience and buying things that are convenient and ordering things off Amazon to make our lives convenient and being entitled to convenience. And I am absolutely one of those people. Like, I'm not going to, you know, point the finger at everyone else and not at myself because I do it too. But I have reached a point where in my life where I want majestic nature close by I feel like I am not at home because I am not in I don't have easy access to nature so I so choosing Sacramento it gives me like access to the San Francisco Bay like metropolitan area and all the cities around there which will really help me professionally and Sacramento seems also like a really good city where I can raise my kids but it seems hella awesome because I can go to the ocean. I can go to the mountains. I can, there's a lake, you know, there's Folsom Lake. Um, there's so much availability of natural beauty. And so I've met a number of mothers lately from California or who have California family or whatever, who are here. And I, one of them was so great. So I was at the airport. One of them was from San Luis Obispo, which is very close to where the ex moved. And I was asking her why she lives in Dallas. Like, I can't imagine if you're from San Luis Obispo and you could live there. I mean, I get it that it's more expensive to live out there. So you want to live somewhere less expensive. Okay. I get it, but it's so gorgeous. And so I was asking her and they, she had two sons in high school and they're very sporty. Like they play baseball and they are serious about you sports. And so she She's like, it doesn't even compare 
being able to participate in youth sports in Dallas is so much easier than in California. And Dallas is a very convenient city to live in. It's flat, it's gridded. It was so easy for me when I was raising my babies, you know, if I needed something, if I needed formula, and this was really before Amazon was delivering anything you needed at any time of the day, if you needed to go anywhere, Dallas was super easy. Where I live, I live so damn close to restaurants and Target and other grocery stores and gas stations. We moved you know, it to, we moved to San Antonio for a little bit years ago. And then before that, I lived in Austin for eight years. And Austin is hilly and trafficy, and it's and, and it can be inconvenient. Like I think about raising my kids in Austin and how much harder it would be to raise my children there than in Dallas. But it's a trade off because, you know, you got all the right wingers and the Republicans and the evangelicals and and that whole thing like really fucking sucks. And so you end up, I don't, it's so interesting, isn't it? Where the places are that are super convenient to live, but what you're losing, you know, what you're losing for that. For instance, I was listening to, I guess Dak Shepard was interviewing Gunter, what's his face, who manages the Haas Formula One team. And Gunter is from Northern Italy near Germany. So he's like very German, but he's, he's, Italian, but he speaks German and um, he doesn't speak Italian like natively. Anyway, I mean, he speaks it, but I'm just saying Germany, German is his first language. Anyway, I digress. So he lives in, I think, North or so- North Carolina. I think wherever the house team pre- like headquarters out of, I think. And, and so Dex was asking him why, so why do you live here and not there? Because there is beautiful. I mean, he lives in Northern Italy and I've been to Northern Italy and it is phenomenally gorgeous and there are in drive to survive on netflix like there are shots of him hiking in those mountains and it's majestic and it's amazing and i remember being in college and being in switzerland and being in that whole area and just thinking of it as soul food and feeling alive like feeling like vibrating with with aliveness just being in that geographical area and I couldn't understand what the hell, like, I understand there are parts of North Carolina that are beautiful. I mean, there's so much natural beauty in America, but I just thought, you know, you're living by the Alps. I didn't understand, but he said it's just so convenient. And I've heard that from other Europeans. Why do you live here? Because it's so convenient. I've asked, we have a good, you know, high population of French people who live here. And I've asked the moms, you want to move back? And they were like, no, we love having our master bathroom, like our bathroom in our bedroom. So no, I'm not moving back to France. I don't want to move back. I mean, they wouldn't move back for nothing. And not that like living in in the city in Paris is necessarily beautiful. There are parts of Paris that aren't beautiful. But there are, I mean, but anyway, and I guess if you live in it and you do like change and everything, but I just feel like I want to have a conversation about what we lose when we decide that we want convenience. And it's one thing when your kids are little versus when they're older, but I don't, I don't know. And I noticed during COVID, there were so many Americans that were so entitled to their convenience that they didn't give a shit if they were going to die, if someone else was going to die, like they didn't care. They wanted their convenience and their go to the grocery store, go in person to places, and they were not going to give that up. And they didn't get no fucks. They didn't get no shits. And, and I wrote a piece about it and I just thought we really will die rather than live an inconvenient life. I know there's a lot of people who who decide to kind of like live off the grid or have some land and live far out and then you don't and it's not easy to go to the grocery store and that's hard. I know that when my ex and I got together and we first started looking at houses, we looked at some of those houses that were really neat and you had all this land to play on. I think that's a little different than living close to like majestic beauty, which is kind of what I want. I want to live close to mountains. And I want some breathtaking scenery and I want to kayak and paddleboard on a pretty lake. And I want, and I just feel like, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. I wonder if people feel like that. Other people feel like that who live in Dallas, that we have a detriment or we have a, you know, a lack. We just have like a serious lack of nature and natural beauty and what, role does that play on our lives not being 
able to participate in that easily. I grew up from the age of four to 10 in Aurora, Colorado, and we were out. Like we didn't have any money. We drove to the mountains and played in a stream. We had a huge park next to us and we were out on our bikes in the park constantly. It was so much fun to play in the snow. I mean, we were outdoors all the damn time. And when I was 10, we moved to Houston and Houston is so hot and humid. And I feel like that was one of the most tragic events of my life and potentially even more tragic than my parents' divorce, which I didn't feel like was tragic because my dad was like so shitty. So I was really kind of glad that my mom, I mean, it was a shock, but it was also like, yeah, she needs to get away from him. And we kind of all do. Um, but the move from Denver to Houston was tragic. The inability to play as much outside, the inability to go climb in a mountain and just go like run around some woods and get lost. The, in, the, the, now the necessity to pay a lot of money to do something fun whether it's drive down to Galveston, whether it's go to Splash Town, whatever it was, we had to pay all this money and we had no fucking money. So I I look at my kids and Dallas this past summer just had three plus months of straight triple digit heat. So they can't go outside because we don't have a pool. So the outdoors is like only available for privileged people. And convenience is really like a very much something available to privileged people in capitalist white supremacy. So here, me even being able to use natural beauty, access to to nature as a determinant, as a metric for where I want to live is privileged. And I get that. And anyway, um, and I know I say anyway, all the damn time I'm working on it. Um, I was listening to someone on a podcast who she interviews a lot and she never does this, but she was being interviewed and she said this or that a million times. And I just thought that was so funny because we all have got something that we say constantly or we we're a smack or a um or whatever. And anyway, 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 I thought, I really think that this is something I want to, I wanted to think about and I want to talk about and I want to talk about it with other people. What do you think? What do you think? The importance of natural beauty is in your life. And is it not so important that like access to youth sports is better or living in a bigger house because wherever there's natural beauty, the it, like the property prices are higher. So we would rather have like a pool and a big house and video game systems and then just take trips to beautiful places periodically throughout the year. Or, or we would rather be close to family and our family just happens to be in Texas. Our family just happens to be wherever. Um, I don't know. I think that if you want to rate areas of the country, that's another thing. I would really be interested to know where Dallas stands as opposed to the suburbs of Chicago. You know, I'm in North Dallas, but so I'm in the suburbs, but the, but the suburbs of Chicago and the suburbs of Milwaukee, are those beautiful places to live? And so it just happens to be the Dallas suburbs. And that's another thing is I don't want to go where there's snow. I don't, I just don't want to deal with the snow. So that was when I'm trying to decide where to, where I want to move. I wanted to move where I would have a lot of professional availability, but I didn't want things to be too cold. I mean, I want to be outside a lot, a lot. I want to be in nature a lot. And, and if I have to drive a little farther for a gallon, for new problems, you know, it's not like you never have problems. I'm just ready for new problems. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Is it convenience versus beauty or do I even have connecting? Oh, I have a bad connection. It paused because I have a bad connection. Anyway, that's okay. Okay, you guys, I'm going to hop off now, but this is, this should be an ongoing conversation about convenience versus beauty, but I guess it all depends on where you are in your life and what you're trying to accomplish in that in that part of your life and what you want that day to look like. My day needs to be a day where I I have proximity to the ocean. I have proximity to a lake. I have proximity to gorgeousness and mountains and I can just kiss mother nature and mother Gaia all the damn time. Anyway. All right. Well, happy Saturday.
I'll be back on here soon. I'll be doing these regularly, even though now I'm gearing up for a move and I'm gearing up to just completely take on life and change my life and live it and love it. And I'm excited. But this is something I think about and something I wonder. And I wonder what y'all think about it. Anyway, talk soon. Toorah. Peace out. Love you.